In the early 1980s, the children of southern Sudan lived a peaceful life. A time when life's responsibilities consisted of taking the cattle out to graze and playing with friends. However, all that changed as conflicts sparked between the predominantly northern Muslim government and the southern Christian tribes. Spanning more than 20 years, civil war brought attacks to the small villages of southern Sudan, killing 2 million people, mostly adults, and compromising the youth of over 30,000 boys, who were told by their families to run, and run they did. Walking over 1,000 miles through atrocious conditions, evading wild animals, and crossing unforgiving rivers, only to come to the harsh realities of refugee camps. This group of boys survived this tragic exodus and later became known as the Lost Boys of Sudan. Sudan is a country filled with ongoing conflict that has changed the lives of millions of people. Egypt and the British took control of Sudan in 1898, governing north and south differently. However, an Egyptian revolution in 1952 set events into motion that ended British occupation in Sudan. As a result, the British agreed to Sudanese independence in 1956 and the two regions were brought together to form Sudan. A military coup in 1958 toppled the civilian government. Continuous conflict poisoned the economic development of the country. Between 1966 and 1969, the civilian-led government continued to see economic deterioration. Assisted by the Communist Party, Jafar el-Numari seized control in a bloodless coup, agreeing to coexist with the Sudan Socialist Party and the Tech Sol Legal Party. As Cold War attention tightened, officials in Khartoum were courted by the Soviets and Americans. In 1972, the Addis Ababa Agreement between the North and South brought a temporary compromise to the war in the South. The South was granted self-government but not independence. In 1978, the discovery of black gold in South Sudan promised to bring a breath of economic prosperity. However, questions of equal shares between the North and the South soon arose. As stricter laws from Khartoum were dispensed, the Sudanese People's Liberation Movement laid the framework for the final and major stage of civil war, which began in 1983. Ignited in conflict once again, Sudan found itself divided. Muslims against animists and Christians and Arabs against blacks. The group most compromised was the youth. As the small villages in southern Sudan were attacked, some of the children were captured by northern soldiers. The boys were put to work as child soldiers for the Northern Army, where the girls were often raped and sold off as slaves. Those who managed to escape ran into the bush as fire was poured on them from the sky. The name Lost Boys came to be when I, I forgot I wrote this, when our, when our village was attacked by, our, by a fierce Arab horseman, we little boys spewed out of the blazing village like a colony of ants disturbed in the nest. We ran in different directions, not knowing where we, were, we are going. We gathered some fruits for our breakfast and lunch. We little boys were so messy. All chaos and cries filling the dark, fearless, lightless night. They were alone and not sure where to go. As the boys made their way across the treacherous desert, they did whatever was needed to survive. I was probably maybe like seven years old. It was terrifying, you know? You, uh, it was really hard. There's no food during the walk. There's no, the wild, you know, like sometimes you watch out with a wild animal. And then at daytime, the, the government soldiers are, are bombing you, you know, bombing. So it was very terrifying for a child just at, at that age, you know. But I know along, along the way, I was not alone. I have, we, were, we were taking care of each other. We were encouraging each other and we were protecting each other, whatever, as much as we can. The goal of the group was to find safety in camps like Penyido and Paltaka. Adjusting to the camp was difficult. While the boys found the element of safety, they also found that fighting insects like chiggers and illnesses made them long for the care of their mothers. I had family, beautiful family. You know, we live in a village and uh, my dad had many wives. So uh, as a child, I would play like any normal child, you know, eat, sleep. That's all I knew. You know, I didn't know anything else. You know, there were many animals in our land, wild animals, so, and our land was beautiful. They soon realized that the camps were supported by the Sudanese People's Liberation Movement. These were not only refugee camps, but training grounds for future rebel soldiers. It is rumored that once a boy reached the height of an AK-47, he was old enough to fight. The international community was of little help to the Sudanese children who were struggling to survive. The United States government described Sudan as a terrorist state and imposed international sanctions which were supported by the European Union and the United Nations. With little support from the outside world, the boys did their best to survive. In 1991, the Ethiopian government found itself a victim of a coup. 
Once again, war had found the Lost Boys. To avoid conflict, they evacuated the camps, walking from Panyo back to the border of Sudan. From not having a parent or anybody uh, that I was related to, um, to um, not knowing that if I was going to make it, you know, because many times, um, it, you know, kids got sick and they died. Um, I got sick many times, you know. Wow, I'm glad I didn't, I didn't die, you know. Uh, time, there was no food at all. I mean, no water. I mean, so when I, when I escaped from uh, that camp, I was literally looking for my family. Those who survived walked on towards Kenya. Facing the treacherous desert once again, some boys had to drink their own urine to survive. In 1991 to 1992, after a 1,000 mile journey, 10,000 boys between the ages of 8 and 18 made it to the Kakuma refugee camp in Kenya. The orphan young men found themselves trapped in the sprawling parched settlement of mud huts which had become their new home. In 1992, the International Rescue Committee became increasingly involved in Kakuma, joining forces with the United Nations. Through humanitarian aid, the boys were offered a bit of security in the form of medical care, food rations, and donated clothing. After completing the school program, the boys had little to do with their time except wait and hope. In 1998 to 1999, oil began to flow from Sudan. International trade brought compromise in the form of diplomacy. The United States offered the largest resettlement act of its kind for the boys. After lengthy INS interviews, the boys hoped to find their names on paper posted weekly on a board, which became known as the Staples of Life. Once selected for resettlement, each boy was provided basic cultural orientation to prepare them for coming to America. This New York. Hey, very tiny. The Lost Boys were split into small groups and began arriving in America. They received basic support from the International Rescue Committee, the U.S. government, and other resettlement agencies. The resettlement compromise paid for the boys' plane ticket to America, which they agreed to repay after three months of arrival. Financial aid for food and housing was given to them for their first three months in America. After, they were left to make their way in the land of opportunity. The Lost Boys were both amazed and overwhelmed, facing cultural shock. As a result, they were finding that they were not adequately prepared for the fast pace of American culture. If it had not been for the volunteers who became aware of their immense needs, the Lost Boys may have found themselves lost once again. While most of the boys dealt with immense challenges, they worked hard for a better life. However, some found that overcoming the trauma they had faced more challenging. He developed post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, quickly because now things are, uh, uh, his life will become, you know, he feel like he was alone. The post-traumatic stress many of the Lost Boys faced was not adequately handled with resettlement. So he walked into the building, very much crying out for help, that I need help, but he didn't, he didn't, he didn't know how, you know, how to ask for it. You don't have to with violence, but that's all he knew because be, being a child so he grew up in a poor, you know, going through what he went through. So he went and threatened the staff. Um, it was very, it was, it was very, uh, very tragic for everybody because now you have a, uh, this man with a weapon in the building. So they called the police. Um, they told him to put the gun down. He shot back, uh, you know, he shot back to the police and then they shot him and killed him in the office instantly. Over the decades, the Lost Boys have been working diligently to build new lives. Unconditionally supporting one another, many have gone on to obtain college degrees, becoming U.S. citizens, and found success in adjusting to their new American lives. However, the Sudanese resettlement program ended abruptly after September 11, 2001 with attacks on the United States. In 2005, a tenuous peace agreement between the North and South was signed. The compromise held until 2011 when Southern Sudan seceded from Sudan. Faith and peace was temporarily restored until December of 2013. As a result, South Sudan is facing another humanitarian crisis. It's a man-made war and because of the greedy and that's why the conflict right now is causing a lot of a uh, lot of death and starvation in the country. Today, the Lost Boys who fled civil war two decades ago are now men, many who serve as leaders in their American communities, educating others about the harsh realities of the ongoing conflict in Sudan, often returning to help with sustainability initiatives. Some have gone on to marry and have begun raising families here in the United States, as these once Lost Boys have risen up through the trampled grass of their childhood, where they once found their homes engulfed in conflict they continue to search for a way to help their lost country find its strength and soul again.